Hi, um, good morning, happy happy Good Friday everybody. Uh, my, I've had a few topics I've put on my channel um, so far and thank you thank you so much for watching. If you have, thank you, I really appreciate it. Uh, and the thing I was going to talk about today is um, a bit about kind of sleep, sleep problems and um, I've, I've read the book Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep, um, which is a really good book. Uh, and I've also sort of read, read up a bit about Andrew Huberman, who's a Stanford professor who sort of specialises in kind of neuro research. And you know, I know I, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a researcher. I'm just sort of um, somebody who's educated and he, he went to medical school and sort of and now works still in healthcare. But I thought I'd just kind of impart some of the things I've learned. And sleep is is obviously a massive issue and i think sort of um over in, over here in england it's 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 not it's it's a few different in america i think in america there's a lot more um sleep centers where they look at sleep and how people sleep and it's a, it's a fascinating topic um just sort of the whole process of sleep and i don't think we place enough of an importance on it um and you know if you need you know a sleep can be a cause factor, a sleep deprivation can be a cause factor for all kind of conditions and all kind of medical conditions and um, <coughs> sort of it's, it's, it's interesting looking at what, what, what sleep involves and you know just, just looking at sort of the, the typical sleep night you know sort of you have four, you have four stages of sleep including um, deep sleep and REM sleep um, both of which are incredibly important um, and you know, I think people don't realise that actually you have cycles of sleep throughout the night. So, you know, um, they, they say typically, if typical is such a thing, you have 90 minute cycles where you have these four stages of sleep, where you go into non-REM, REM, deep sleep. Um, and in fact, the, the, the somnotherapy app, I'm, or the somnotherapy website I'm using at the moment, um, which is um, cognitive behaviour therapy for insomnia, which it's CBTI therapy, um, you know, talked about how in fact the first part of your sleep is actually deep sleep. Um, so it's prioritised deep sleep, and I think deep sleep is, is used, you know, is, is sort of refreshing. And um, and and the REM sleep, um, which I've sort of talked about, is you know the fourth stage, where you get the rapid eye movement, um, which interestingly isn't linked to your dreams. Your your eyes just move from side to side in response to your brain, neuro electricity, the way your brain's neuro and neuro electric electrical activity flows through the brain when it's in the REM stage. It's not to do with you watching things in dreams, it's just the way your eyes move, which I find <laughs> a little bit kind of creepy, frankly, but, um, but REM is really important for learning. So a lot of people who don't get good REM sleep, um, you know, the whole learning, I think the way your brain stored information, REM sleep is important for that. And, um, you know, if you look at people who have a lot of that, drink a lot of alcohol, for instance, you don't you don't get REM sleep. You don't have an REM sleep, and there's something called delirium tremens, where it's it's where people have sort of they dream in an awake state, kind of a bit like psychosis, um, but they actually dream, and it's called delirium tremens. But it's because they don't get the REM sleep they need, so it, it sort of merges into daily life. So they become, you know, sort of dream like during the day and, and it's known as delirium tremens in medicine and um, and there's all this information about you know how much sleep you should get a night and it, it varies for a lot of people like you don't necessarily like obviously when you're in adolescence you're you need more sleep but as an adult you know people need a whole variety of different levels of sleep you know you, you don't have to have eight hours of sleep some people feel refreshed on six or, or five um, and but I think the thing to say is, is deep sleep for instance, is very important because when you go into deep sleep, when you you know um, your brain sort of drains and replaces its fluid, and obviously it's it's bathed in fluid. This brain, your your, your neurons and your cells inside a brain, you know, are bathed in, in 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 fluid. Like it's with you know in your, in your spine, there's a cerebral spinal fluid. Well, it extends into your brain underneath the kind of the different layers and the meninges and the pia mater that that coat the brain. You've got this fluid that bathes the brain, and that needs to be replaced. And if you hear about things like hydrocephalus, where that this fluid gets trapped and the, and the points where it drains can't drain and then you see people with kind of fatty babies with very big expanded heads because the fluid isn't draining and, and when you sleep you know not that you'll get hydrocephalus if you don't sleep but your brain 
is then draining the fluid. So if you don't get the, the sleep, your, your brain doesn't drain the fluid properly. So you get a buildup of debris. So it's actually, it's actually a massive issue for sort of things like dementia because you get a buildup of debris, kind of the amyloid and the tau plaques, and, and it builds up and it doesn't get cleared properly. So then you get a buildup in your brain and it, so your brain deteriorates. Um, and the other interesting thing is, um, you know, sort of, I think 80% of people with probably vascular dementia more than sort of Alzheimer's have diabetes because if your brain can't uptake glucose appropriately, so if your glucose receptors are no longer receptive it can't, and your brain can't uptake glucose appropriately, then your brain can't function properly. It can't use glucose like it should do. And, you know, it uses ketones as a site, you know, like you hear about the keto diet and obviously the brain can use ketones, but it cannot use glucose. So as a result, the brain doesn't function properly and becomes scarred. And that's when you have, you know, when you have these problems with sort of things like vascular dementia, because your brain can't cope. Um, and obviously you also get kind of, you know, mini strokes and things with vascular dementia, which is different again to the whole issue of the diabetes and not having glucose uptake into the brain. Um, so, you know, sleep is massively important and, and it is an issue at the moment because of lockdown and a lot of people are needing sleep and, you know, there are things like sleeping tablets here and it's just sort of a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a topic that's, that's, that's a kind of very important to health, I think, and it's just something that's, that's an interesting sort of thing to talk about and discuss really and, and and, um, you know, I certainly, I'm trying to work on my sleep and uh, this, 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 the, Summon, the Summon Therapy CBT app is, is sort of, you know, giving me kind of um, tips on how to manage it and, and just little things like going to bed at the, at the same time each night and um, not eating in the middle of the night because, you know, you don't just have a circadian rhythm where your, your eyes can see when the, when the day changes. So that's all linked to melatonin and you hear about circadian and melatonin and you know, obviously, that's the whole idea of the early morning and the late walks. You want to get your melatonin produced, and you know that's the that's the thing that sends your brain to sleep. But you know, your your body has a biological clock as well. So if you eat in the middle of the night, your body thinks you're awake. You know, so and it won't it won't put you to sleep. So just tips like that, really, that not not to eat at night time and to um, sort of have have your meals during the, during the day, and and even things like light and how your you know Andrew Huberman talks about how. You're, you're less sensitive to light early in the morning and you're more sensitive to light at night and especially between the hours of sort of 10 and 2 o'clock in the morning um, your, your eyes are very sensitive to light and in fact your, 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 your visual, you know, your eyes are, 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 are sort of part um, linked with something called, I want to say the, homun the, the homunculus or something he was talking about but that's actually d directly linked to your pancreas so your, your, eye, your eyes and your, you know, are linked to your blood glucose levels because your pancreas is important in sugar control so, you know, that, that's why your sugars, if you're diabetic or, you know, like, deteriorate if you don't have enough sleep. So that's why. And, you know, if you look at shift workers who do night work, you know, it must be, it must be kind of, you know, and you hear about how, you know, shift working and night working is quite det detrimental to your health. And, and you know, that, that's why, because it's not, it's not good to not go with your body's flow, not, not do what your, what's, what's your, what your body wants you to do. And, you know, if you're fighting that, then... You know, it doesn't like it very much. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm working on my sleep hygiene. I'm trying to work on my sleep hygiene. Um, and I, you know, I actually took a sleeping tablet last night because I've got to the point now where, it's, where I want to get into a routine where I don't get up at night and I don't open my eyes at night and I don't eat at night. And sort of having gone, you know, caffeine free and having the the routine of ten o'clock and going to bed regularly and doing all the meditation and things and and everything else is not is is not working so you know i'm going to do a course of sleeping tablets just so i'm asleep in the sort of broad you know broader sense of the word not not with my eyes open not moving around not eating like you know just just so my body's like okay so this is the this is night time and then obviously when i finish the course then i'll you know continue on with my sleep hygiene and Hopefully at that point my body will then be like, okay, so this is what sleep is. And you know, it may not be that. It may, it may just be that I'm, I'm always going to struggle with my sleep. But um, but that's what I'm at, at the moment. Just sort of, you know, and I think that's what sleeping tablets are for, just to get you back into the normal routine of things. And sort of all the things I was talking about in terms of the background is why, why it's important that it's just to get back into normal routine rather than use it as a long-term solution. So, yeah, um, um that's sort of the update really and 
um, thank you so much for for kind of listening. Thank you so much for you know if you still are listening. Thank you because I know it's difficult to to listen. Um, and have a great have a great Easter. Uh, enjoy enjoy it. It's, it's good that kind of things are getting better in England at the moment. So that's great. Um, yeah, and just sort of thank you. Thank you again so much for for listening. Essentially, thank you.